Jerry Maguire of AI has arrived and he's shouting, show me the mo fairly trained models. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to AI Roundup, a weekly digest of all things AI related. I'm your host, Phil Buck, and if you enjoy the coverage here on the show, do me a favor and hit that like button and sub to the channel. Just a few weeks back, we covered the story of Ed Newton Rex, who stepped down from his position as VP at Stable Audio. Ed claimed that what Stability AI was doing to train their models was unethical and exploitative of creatives, and that it was, in fact, the status quo for the AI industry as a whole. He's not wrong. Now Newton Rex is back in the headlines and he's putting his money where his mouth is with the launch of a new company, Fairly Trained, that is the first organization of its kind that certifies AI models that have been trained ethically only on data that they have been given permission to train on. Fairly Trained already has nine AI models certified. Beethoven.ai, Boomi, Bria AI, Indel, LifeScore, Rightsify, Psalms.ai, Soundful, and Tuni. The majority of which are all music or sound-based AI models, which makes sense with Newton Rex past at Stable Audio and the fact that he is himself a musician and composer. The process to have a model certified ranges in cost from $500 up to $6,000, depending on the annual revenue of the company, and the vetting process for the certification is comprehensive and thorough, requiring robust due diligence into training data, as well as a clear record-keeping process to document the data that was used to train. From the Fairly Trained website, all data sources are required to fall into these categories to pass certification. Be explicitly provided to the model developer for the purpose of being used as training data. Be available under an open license appropriate to the use case. Be in the public domain globally and or be fully owned by the model developer. I think this is a fantastic move in the right direction. Fairly Trained is setting the standards for which AI can be called ethical and is taking it a step further by offering a process by which these models can prove they adhere to these standards. Now, I can already hear the pushback to this and I think this is actually a great opportunity to address some of the feedback we've been getting in the comments of the show. First, I have to say that I know that meeting these requirements won't be easy for any company pushing a state-of-the-art AI product. And furthermore, people are going to contest that other people are going to keep doing this with unfair data and leave everyone else in the dust. But if you've been paying attention at all, then you already know that outputs from unfairly trained models are being lambasted in the public arena again and again. Just last week, I saw Mad Cats, maker of knockoff game controllers, getting roasted for using AI images in their social media presence on X. And before that, over the holidays, Wacom, the makers of the very tools creators use to make the art that AI steals, was also getting similarly torn apart for using an AI dragon in their social media posts. People aren't going to stand for companies using a machine heavily guilty of plagiarism. And I think it's really in the best interest of companies if they're looking to outsource some of their creative needs to machines to, at the very least, use one that can't be accused of stealing from creatives. And to answer this comment on my last video, it says, Cool, U.S. will restart AI and China just keep going. Yes, the U.S. or any country or company or any person for that matter who wants to do the right thing and run a business not based on theft will need to eventually stop using models that can't meet these standards. AI is not the first battleground that the U.S. and China have fought over IP and technology patents, and it surely won't be the last. The addition of AI to the contest doesn't change that. Do you really, really enjoy when you see knockoffs of everything you've ever tried to create being made in China? I mean, this is no different. It's just about AI. Additionally, people, and I'll admit in the past I've used the same argument, love to compare training in AI to the same process of a human learning that humans learn from copyrighted material all the time without consent. But we're not talking about a sentient computer here, people. Let's be real. The use of the term AI has really muddied the waters for this conversation. But as of right now, today, while I record this, large language models are nowhere near the idea of what we now refer to as AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. And it feels disingenuous to me to compare training and LLM that operates at enterprise levels to the way a human learns and reinterprets that information. Even a human with photographic memory has a limited capacity to reproduce the input they've learned from. And an LLM can do it at scale for hundreds of people all at once. Additionally, it has been proven that LLMs and diffusion models can reproduce the works they were trained on verbatim, which is far beyond being influenced by them. It's plagiarism. 
I'm in favor of developing this tech and making it available for everyone, but it just needs to be done fairly. I could go on and on about this, but I don't have enough time in this video to unpack all the ramifications that discussing ethically trained AI carries, so if you want to continue the debate, join me in the MSP Media Network Discord. What do you think of this movement by Ed Newton Rex is fairly trained? Alright, that's it for today's AI Roundup. <laughs> if you're enjoying the show, please hit that like button and sub to the channel, and sound off with your thoughts in the comments. Signing off for this January 22nd episode, I am Phil Buck, and I'll see you next time. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.